Hey everybody, welcome. My name is Caleb. In this video, we're going to talk about the basics of digital signatures and go through an implementation in Rust. So digital signatures will basically give you a way to verify a message came from who you think it came from. Just imagine you get a letter in the mail telling you about something or telling you to do something. How do you know that it's authentic? Well, you could check the handwriting or, you know, interpret if that's something the person who sent it to you would say, or there might be a signature on that, which you could identify as being authentic. Now that's obviously not foolproof because signatures could be forged. In the world of computers, similar concepts exist, but it's going to be a little bit better than just writing a signature because we're actually going to use cryptography and a private key. So you can find a pretty good image on Wikipedia for digital signatures, and it looks something like this. So we have two people, Alice and Bob, and the idea is Alice wants to say hi to Bob, but Bob wants to know if this message is truly coming from Alice. And with the magic of cryptography, this is possible. So Alice is going to have a key pair which consists of a private key and a public key. The public key will be given out to Bob and whoever else will be verifying messages from Alice. And then Alice signs the message using her private key. And then this message can be verified using the public key. So if somebody else wrote this message and signed it with a different private key, this verify would return false. Now you can read about all the magic of how this works in Wikipedia or other resources online. The main goal of this video is to make a basic implementation of this concept and to see that it works, but not necessarily to understand all the cryptography behind the scenes because it can probably get pretty complicated. Now this is important for verifying messages, but that's not it. It's also used for more complex things such as financial transactions. This is the functionality that powers a lot of cryptocurrency transactions, which is basically you signing a transaction, which is then validated with your public key. So we're going to start with a very basic example in Rust where we just have a string message and we sign it with a private key and then we'll verify it to see if that message came from who we think it came from. And then we'll go through an example of using a more complex type such as just a struct instance and this could represent a transaction for example. Now we're not going to go and build a full cryptocurrency or anything like that but I'm just going to use a very basic example of signing a more complex message. So we'll just create a new project cargo new signatures and then I will open this in an editor and from here we're going to open a terminal here so any new terminal commands I'll just execute it from within Visual Studio Code and then we'll open up our main.rs and we're going to start with a message so let's just create a message and this can just be a string hello there and let's say we got a message from somebody telling us to do something how do we know if it's authentic so let's just say invest in Tesla. Like, that could be good advice, but it could also be someone trying to trick us into investing in the wrong thing. So we're going to start by creating a private key, which will also give us a public key. To do this, we're going to use a few packages. We're going to say cargo add bls underscore signatures. So the signature scheme we're going to use is bls. You can do more research on that if you wish, but it'll all be pretty similar in concept of signing with your private key and verifying with your public key. And then we will also use rand. And this will be used to generate a random private key. So enter, that'll be installed. And now we will use these in our file. So use BLS signatures. And in here we're going to use private key. And then we will also use rand. And in here I'm going to use thread random number generator. Okay, cool. So now we need to generate a key pair. So we'll say let private be private key and then we'll invoke generate and this is going to take a random number generator and this is just something that needs to implement rng core and crypto rng which the thread random number generator from the random package does so that's what we're going to use here so we'll pass a mutable reference to thread random number generator and this is a function call and that should give us a private key. So let's just print that out. Now, obviously this isn't something you would want to share as then people could assign messages for you. So I'm just kind of doing this for demonstration purposes. And then we will use the debug output format. And then we'll say cargo run. Let this install everything and you can see your private key right here. Now to get a public key, we'll say let public, and this will come from private dot, and there should be a public key function on this so we can print that as well public 
debug format. Run, and you can see that structure looks something like this. All right, so we have a key pair. Now let's talk about signing a message. So this is the message we want to tell our friend. The way we sign a message is we take the private key and say sign, passing in the message. This is going to create a signature. So we'll assign it to a variable, which we can call sig or signature. And then this can be used later in the verification. So what does a verification look like? We'll say let verification be public dot, and there should be a verify. Now verify is going to take the signature and the original message and give us back true or false. So print line is the message authentic, and then we will pass in verification. Let's run this and we can see is the message authentic true. So the message and the private key are tied together in this call here. So if we change either one of these, it's going to fail. So if we pass in a different message, we'll see that the authentication failed. So if the message is changed or the signature is changed, then the verification will fail. So you can imagine two people on one end, they sign the message and give it to somebody to deliver that message. That message, when it reaches its destination, has to be not tampered with and has to have the original signature created when that message was sent. So this will protect against tampering and will make sure that the message came from who you believe it came from. So let's now go create another key and pretend to write this message as the original user and we'll see that the verification fails. So I'm going to take this line and copy it and then we'll just call this private2 and I'm going to comment out this print line just because it's kind of sloppy. It's kind of hard to read. So the public key would be given to the destination so that they know who they're checking against. And then if this new person wants to pretend to write a message telling someone to invest in something, you know, they could pretend, hey, it's me, Caleb, even though it's not, what a phony. They sign the message and then they verify it using the signature and the original message, this should fail. So we run and is the message authentic? False. Because the destination is verifying it with the first public key who they expected the message to come from. So this would be like Caleb's public key. So it's only going to work if it's signed by the original private key and that's going to come back as authentic. Now the next challenge is what if the message is more complex than just a string? Say we have a struct which represents a transaction. Let's build what that might look like. I'll define that up here. We'll say struct transaction and in here we could have a from which could be a string, a to which could be a string, and an amount which could be an i128. And then instead of having just a message saying to do something, Let's say we're trying to spend money, make a transaction. So our new message is now going to be an instance of transaction, and then we'll provide an amount, let's say 100, and then I'll say from, which will be string from Caleb, and then two will be string from you. Okay, so let's say this is our message. The problem here now is when we hover over private.sign, you'll see the trait bound transaction as ref, U8 is not satisfied. What is all this and how do we fix it? This is basically saying that the data structure needs to be able to be converted to a slice of bytes, U8. An easy solution to this is to serialize the data, which is basically to convert it from an object to a series of bytes that can easily be sent and used. So basically you can think of it as a string representation of this data. So let's talk about serializing data. So we have this message and you could just make this a JSON object and then pass it as a string to private.assign. So to do that, we're going to use a package. So we're going to use this Surde package, a generic serialization deserialization framework. And that's where the, the letters come from. So S-E-R-D-E. And then what we could do is we could just have our type implement automatically with derive serialize and deserialize. So to do this, we just need to add the serde, I think I'm saying that maybe it's serde, I'm not entirely sure, as a dependency with the derive feature. And we will also use serde JSON. So let's go install these. We will clear out and then say cargo add serde and serde underscore JSON. And then go over to the cargo file 
and you'll find that it doesn't automatically have that features. So let's add that in here. So I'm going to copy this here and then just paste it right here. So I'm just using version 1.0 with features derived. Now above our struct, we can add that trait implementation with derive passing in parentheses and we will need to import this. So use serde and then the things we want to import are deserialize and serialize. And now we should be able to pass these in the parentheses. So deserialize, serialize. And I forgot pound sign here. Okay. That's step one. So now how do we actually use this? Before we sign the message, we will say, let serialized message be serde underscore JSON colon colon to string passing in that object. So we'll pass in message and I'm gonna pass in a reference to message and then we will unwrap and then serialized message should now be of type string. So that's what we'll pass to sign. So serialized message. And same thing for the verification. We'll need to verify against the same exact message. Now we don't want to actually move these. So I'm just going to use references here. So that should fix it. And now cargo run, we can see, fingers crossed, is the message authentic? True. That's pretty much it for verifying the message, but it is possible to then deserialize that if needed. So it would look something like this, let deserialized message, and then we'll give it the type. So what was this originally? It was a transaction. And this will come from Saturday JSON from stir, passing in a reference to the serialized message. And then we'll just need to unwrap again. Also make sure you spell it right. So that's a pretty tough word. And now you could just use this like a normal object. You can hover over it and see the type. Obviously it's transaction because we're using the type there. So you can just treat it like a normal transaction object. So for example, you could say DC, well actually we'll do this outside of the parentheses or the uh, quotes and say deserialized dot oh, message dot and then whatever value you want to print. So that's just an example of using that new object and we get that value down there. Now this message should be tamper proof. So if somebody tries to create a new message, this is not going to work because it wasn't signed with the private key. So for example, if I came in here and just pasted this message and called it message two, and you know, we changed the two to be some hacker then down in the verification section, we used a new serialized message. So we took serialized message two and took message two for the input and used that for the verification. That's going to fail the verification and that transaction would be rejected. Another thing you're probably going to want to think through and implement if we're actually going to go on and build this crypto platform the from here, we're just using like a name here, but really this should be an address or a public key. And then that's what should be used for the verification. So basically if anybody could take the public key used for the spend and verify its connection to the from, then we know that we can only source transactions from our own funds. Because as we have it now, we could just make up whatever we wanted here and sign it just say test, you know, and then just see, uh, use that message. So there's no real like validation going on here. So we wouldn't want to be able to put somebody else's address or account and transfer money from it. So this would need to line up with the public key being used for the verify. I'm getting kind of deep down that rabbit trail and that's probably not an adequate explanation to cover everything. So maybe we'll talk about some more of that in a later video if you guys are interested. But I know a lot of you watching this are probably not watching it purely for cryptocurrency sake. So I really wanna keep this general to the public key, private key, digital signatures, as well as the serialization and 
in an upcoming lesson, we could potentially talk more about how you would design this for transactions. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully this video was helpful. If you want more videos on Rust, please let me know in a comment section below and be sure to subscribe to the channel, turn on the notifications, and I'll see you in the next one.